In this episode, you're going to learn why it's important that you as a service designer understand strategy and how you can actually use that in your day-to-day -day work. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. Hi, I'm Majid Iqbal, and this is a service design show, episode number 97. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you to design organizations that put people at the heart of their business. And one thing I keep repeating over and over again is that it's important for service designers to gain more influence on strategy and decision making. But why and how do you actually do that? Luckily, the guest in this episode knows everything about this topic. Majid Iqbal wrote a book titled Thinking in Services, Encoding and Expressing Strategy Through Design. Even if you think you're already a strategic service designer, I can promise you that the conversation with Majid will shine a new light on that. And if this topic interests you, make sure you stick around till the very end of this episode because we're going to give away Majid's book, a signed copy of Majid's book at the end of the episode with a really simple question. If you're new to this channel, make sure you click that subscribe button and that bell icon because we bring a new video to help to level up your service design skills at least once a week. So make sure to do that. That's all for the intro. And now let's quickly jump into the chat with Majid. Welcome to the show, Majid. Hi, Mark. Thank you for inviting me. It's, it's a strange situation because you're probably like less than five kilometers away from me. Yeah. <laughs> For the, we're, we're in the city of Utrecht, uh, in the heart of the Netherlands. Uh, but we, hey, everybody's working remote these days. So, so are we, right? As we must, as we as, must. As yeah. we must, yeah. We, we, we aren't allowed even to get out of home. Majid, um, for the people who don't know who you are, like a brief introduction, could you? Sure. Hi, my, uh, so my name is Majid and uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm an advisor and a consultant. And uh, my focus, uh, my expertise is translating strategies into the designs of services. That's what I do for a living. Presently, I'm working at the Dutch Ministry of Defense, where I'm leading a team focusing on problems of uh, unusual shape and size. We, we help create new thinking so we can, so policymakers have a chance at approaching uh, these problems in a different way. Um, I also uh, help organizations in the commercial sector, uh, attack the challenges of strategy and translating them into designs, you know, the, the perennial, you know, crossing the gap uh, between uh, these high level abstractions and, and the, you know, where the devil is in the details. That's what I also do. Mm -hmm. um, I teach uh, occasionally, I teach uh, um, a, a class called uh, a, a, a Strategic Design for Services. In fact, I just taught 14 people uh, last week, uh, 12 of them in London, and we had to do it <laughs> via Zoom. And uh, that was quite fun. That's what I do, uh, part of my um, missionary zeal, I guess. And uh, and next month, I also will be teaching at the IE University in Madrid. I'll be teaching a new class uh, on strategic design uh, to a group of uh, master's students. So that's what I do. Um, and uh, uh, I wrote a book in 2018. It's called Thinking in Services. Uh, the tagline is Encoding and Expressing Strategy Through Design. Hmm. Um, that book's been out there and it's, it's getting in the right hands. I think people are uh, getting hold of it and, and beginning to understand this whole idea called uh, yeah, uh, service design from a whole different perspective. That's uh, pretty much it. And other than that, you know, um, I like to cook and, you know, that's another way I keep my creative knives sharpened. Cool. Um, Chit, I'm going to put you on the spot because we didn't prepare for this, but shall we do a, a book giveaway at the end of the episode, a signed copy? Sure. Why okay. Not? Absolutely. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, throughout the episode, we'll think of a good question to, to formulate. We'll do a okay. signed uh, book giveaway. Um, you Maybe you don't know, but I think I first saw and heard your story. It must have been, when was the service design conference in Amsterdam? 2016? I think so, yeah. The Westerhaas Fabrik, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember seeing your talk and you were presenting like the uh, three by three matrix of four by four. Uh, what you're thinking, and I, I was looking into the audience, and everybody was like blown away. And what, what is this? <laughs> so I don't. You, you probably haven't seen me uh, back then in the audience, but th that was my first encounter with no, you. I do uh, remember you. You were in the front row. Uh, I was. And, I was. And you asked me to get my mic mic <laughs> correct. <laughs> um, so, 
Majid, I'm really curious, like, how did you get into the service design? When did you first heard about the term? Oh, uh, so uh, I, I, I don't know. Like like many people, I got into it backwards. Uh, I was at Carnegie Mellon University and uh, I wasn't even into the whole world of services back then. Uh, my background is in industrial engineering. But back then, we were I was working for an ins- uh, a research group where we were trying to examine why extremely large service contracts fail. And some of these were, you know, worth billions of dollars. Ah. And uh, and we were trying to approach it from a point of view of like, you know, w- w- you know, where is where, where are the costs and risks in the, involved? But and as you examine that very quickly, you run into the matter of like, who designed this and what is even the design here? Right. So it became a, a very interesting question. But even back then, I wasn't really thinking in terms of service design. I was just thinking, like, how do we even understand services at a, at a new level? Right. Whenever you're confronted with a new problem, you begin to approach it and saying, well, I need to think differently. So that's why I sort of got into this world of services. I was teaching at Carnegie Mellon a a course really back then called Managing Service Organizations. And thus began my journey, my inquiry into this fast and expanding universe of services. And and then uh, I must clarify that around the same time, uh, the service design uh, movement formally also, you know, uh, there was some uh, origin story in Carnegie Mellon began uh, with Birgit and um, uh, Shelley and others, right? Shelley Evanson. Uh, but I wasn't involved in that sort of a, a service design, which was more focusing on how do you improve interactions in the front stage through uh, designs in the backstage. Uh, I, I, uh, I ended up in a completely different parallel path where we're using the same word design, but I'm thinking more in terms of strategy and structure. Uh, whereas what we normally talk about service design is more thought in terms of, you know, the the, uh, the uh, blueprints and journey maps where, you know, uh, whereas we say that the, uh, uh, the design actually meets reality in terms of touch points and interactions and fail points. So I sort of got into it that way. Um, and ever since, you know, I have, I'm, key, I'm of course aware and I interact with the community, but my, when I talk about designing services, which is why I, I, tr- I try to use that phrase, uh, the designs of services, I'm thinking more in terms of structural terms. What are the parts? How do, how do they interact and why do they fail? That's- mm. We're going to get into that uh, for sure. Uh, that, that must have been back in 2006, 7, 5, around that uh, area? Yeah, two, uh, 2003 and 2005. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You go way back. Cool. Um, we are, the main topic for uh, today is going to be from strategy to implementation, something that's been on the episode, uh, on the on the show quite frequently lately. And I think that's a good thing uh, because we actually want to make an impact. We want to see the change that we're trying to create actually materialize. So um, that's the main topic for today. And we have, you have three angles uh, for this. So we're going to do it, of course, through our well-known interview jazz style format. Are you ready for it, uh, Majid? As ready as it can be. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's start. This will be topic number one. Okay. Challenges. Challenges. Okay. Do you have a question starter? And can you show it up to the people watching the video? I guess. What if? It's always uh, not a, it's, it's, you know, as open as a question as it can get, right? Okay. <laughs> what if? Um, what if designers are strategists? Um, so they were, they were simply given the role, the requisite authority, responsibility, and accountability, and saying, from now on, you're going to drive strategy. What might change in their outlook? What do they begin to see? Uh, because the mind uh, sees, you know, uh, the eye sees what the mind is prepared to understand. So how prepared are they? And this is actually a question that we, uh, that, that's, a, that's how I start with when I'm teaching strategic design. So I feel uh, if designers uh, assume the role uh, of strategists, they have to, they will find themselves thinking fundamentally different. Um, and they will find themselves having to climb up and down this ladder of abstraction. They actually find themselves something, doing something they are actually quite prepared to do, to be able to switch back and forth between the abstract and the concrete. And I think that is uh, something that you have to develop uh, in any field, but particularly in design. Uh, I think that's where uh, the idea begins, where you you begin to see uh, services 
uh, and through a, a through an abstraction where you begin to see how uh, every service have have these fundamental patterns um, or structures actually structures and then their patterns among the structures. Uh, and I think it's it it'll be a a, a very uh, refreshing and a thrilling view that they will see because um, they they will take all this experience they have in looking at services at the detail level interactions at the journeys from a user's perspectives. But now uh, they will also have it, have to see from more perspectives than ever before. Um, in many of the uh, talks and conferences, uh, including at the Service Design Network, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago. Was it even in Amsterdam? Um, where uh, there was a talk about you know you know how do you focus a little bit more on the backstage right uh, how do you go from design to implementation because one way to think of it is that the potential lies in the backstage and it and it has to emerge as you know a customer or a user enters the front stage and there's this is dynamic and if you're not prepared in the backstage then uh, there's only so much you can do so, so uh, yeah can i I, I want to uh, interrupt you for a second. For a yeah. Second. Like, <clears throat> what is currently, um, how, how does this lack of strategic thinking manifest in service designers at this moment? Like, mm -hmm. well, uh, I, I'll, I'll be cautious with my remarks um, uh, because uh, it's one, one has to stay clear of generalizations. Sure. This yeah. much is for sure. Um, the very first thing, if you look at if you look at the hard work you go, that goes into producing a service blueprint, okay, and uh, it fills an entire wall. A lot of research, a lot of, a lot of talking to users, getting out there in the field, asking questions, you know, spending a lot of time. So you produce that detail, and the detail is necessary. But then, um, what happens? Uh, but as you go into the detail, uh, you you forget to step back. And, and what's the larger context? Right, your design will fail because of uh, many many times because factors beyond your control. So, which is why one of the key things any strategist has to do, uh, and if you go back to the classical definition of strategy, is to climb on top of a hill, see from far, and start to see the overall uh, um, design, the ecosystem, the pattern. And I think that is something um, that is I don't think. Um, uh, I don't think that, it, oh, let me put it this way, we need to put a, uh, train people or give them the tools to be able to do that a lot more and also in the course of their normal work to be able to step back and see the, see the overall structure. And I think seeing this overall structure of a service through a construct other than a journey is very important. I think that's where, that's where the struggle would be. Um, uh, indeed, in my own experience, when I uh, sometimes um, have discussions with um, service designers, um, one one key thing is that's where I see them struggle to be able to. Uh, you know, we're all trained to do this. It, it's just the way. It's not 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 any one profession. We we are trained to be specialized. Whether you're a lawyer, an accountant, a designer, it does not matter. We have biases and blind spots. So we're very, we're attracted by our biases because they guide them. Biases come from deep knowledge, but there lies the blind spot. So what happens is that you you begin to see things um, uh, um, that you're looking for, and then you miss out on on things that might actually uh, make the service more successful or cause eventual failure. Yeah. So, um, like the are you. Basically, if I'm understanding you correctly, the lack of a strategic perspective um, decreases the chance that your service will be implemented or that the, the, ch the change that you want to bring to the world will actually be implemented, right? It's one of the failure points, lack of strate strategic perspective. I, I think it's more to do with that your service will be implemented, right? Uh -huh. Chances are it's a service that's already up and running and you're trying to sure. improve it, yeah. okay? What might happen is that um, as a situation changes uh, gradually or dramatically, take what's going on right now, right? Almost every service provider is having to figure out how to respond to the crisis. Um, take, for example, Netflix throttling uh uh, uh, the, the the quality of streaming across Europe because networks are congested. Okay, uh, this is a sudden thing. So now suddenly, uh, things you put in place, the strategic choices you made back then, either will now help you adjust uh, smoothly, 
or go through incredible pains. So I think that's the essence. And in, and I think I, I just said something which is very important. Uh, I think whether it goes goes back to Michael Porter, strategy is about choices, uh, choosing to do things, choosing what to do and what not to do. And it, it and and there is parallel in that. Design is also about choices. Strategy is about constraints at a very high level, but design is also about those constraints at at lower levels. So that's so, which is why I think strategy and design go hand in hand, and and it's very important that um, uh, you know we we talk in terms of professions and disciplines, but you know they're not such hard and fast rules. People can situationally find themselves in the role of a designer or that of a strategist, right? So so that's why the focus, uh, you know, our topic is all about translating strategy into design, but also sort of under looking at design and seeing in it what the strategy is, you know. Uh, so I think that's why this this topic that is, is becomes will become more and more important. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, um, we're definitely not done with that one, but we let's move in into sort of uh, the second topic, because when we were preparing this talk, you said to me that there are some fundamental principles of implementing uh, strategy. Uh, and the second topic is fundamental principles. Do you have a question starter? Can you make something nice out of this? Question starter. Okay. How can we, when will, why, why, who are? <laughs> I love your question starters. <laughs> They're wonderful. Um, all right. So maybe how can we? How can we? Yeah. So um, it's it's commonplace. Uh, it's accepted wisdom um, that the service design in, inherently is multidisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, mm -hmm. multidisciplinary. However, you phrase that. Um, whether you're designing um, a bike rental uh, service, um, garbage collection, uh, or emergency healthcare, a lot of different functions and disciplines go into it from uh, operations, infrastructure, software development, you know, regulatory, whatever it might be, right? User experience. And as I mentioned, every discipline has its own biases and blind spots and its own languages and formats. Why? Because that's the best, uh, most efficient way for them to express what they're thinking and share the thinking, right? We, we, we should not expect them to do it any other way. But the challenge then becomes, if we have, if the design has to work, and has to translate the strategy, which is at a high level, then suddenly we have a lot of things lost in translation. Mm. Okay, mm. how can we bring everybody to the on a, on the same page? That becomes a, a key question. And towards this, uh, one of the things we're uh, doing um, when I say we, I'm, I'm in the organizations I work with, we have uh, uh, settled or started using a format called the strategic narrative. The strategic narrative is, a, 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 on one hand, it's simply a story, but it's a story of a, in a very special format in that it has, it's of fixed length, it has uh, so many se sentences, and every statement in the sentence is actually an expression or a declaration on some aspect of design. And it's part of a, a method I've developed uh, called the 16 next frame. Think of it as a puzzle with 16 pieces, and every piece corresponds to one of the 16 elements of design you find in every service, no matter mm. what. And the idea is that you collaboratively solve this puzzle because not everybody, uh, not, not one function or discipline has all the answers, right? Think of it like a family getting getting together and solving a puzzle. You turn around and ask for help, right? Sure. And someone yeah. says, aha. Yeah. So extend this to this uh, family of functions and disciplines. Um, so uh, uh, by solving this puzzle, by asking simple questions, literally, you know, six types of questions, the prototypical questions, who, why, how, what, when and where. <laughs> now, interpreting this question, so this, this is a question that anybody can understand, right? By solving this puzzle where every piece is simply a who, why, how or what, and then in the context of when and where, everybody can bring in their perspective, challenge each other, a key aspect um, in, in this process is is the not just the dialogue but this an argument and counter argument so what this allows you is that everybody can relax nobody has to learn this uh oh i i i, I would do this so well if if you would just you know print me what the contract looks like says the lawyer right somebody else might say show me the blueprint so i think we can get over that because one thing about thing about a strategic narrative is that apart from 
expressing the design, uh, the strategic design, it's a narrative form. Nobody needs to be taught how to read or write a story or edit one. So that's uh, one of the fundamental principles in strategic design, that inviting multiple perspectives, right? Because you are all climbing up at a much higher level of abstraction. At that level, uh, counterintuitive as it might sound, because sometimes people fear the word abstraction. It's too abstract, right? But actually, at a higher level of abstraction, you are actually making things more inclusive, making the participation broader, because you're looking at the same reality, which is the design of a service. And and by answering the questions, you are interpreting, uh, uh, sort of interpreting this, those questions, you're giving your own unique perspective. Oh, I think uh, either the user is really uh, the physician and not the patient. Okay, so that answers the who questions or clarifies right. it. Right, right. Or right. someone could say, what is the actual uh, outcome? And so that, so you can really start discussing this. So I think that's really, uh, in terms of uh, fundamental principles, uh, uh, this is how, uh, this is something I would highlight. To use a format, language and format, that uh, is at once broad and inclusive, and yet uh, powerful enough to actually create a meaningful uh, discussions and output that can be useful at the lower levels of design. Right. So <clears throat> it's creating common ground and it's giving direction. Is that, Correct. Is yeah. that or did I yeah. miss something? Yeah, if I could use the expression, getting everybody on the same page, literally. Yeah, and yeah. Use and, that, that expression. yeah. And, and that's, yeah. that's that's one of the things where you see a lot of services break down because people are still very much thinking about their own piece of the service rather than the service as a whole. And this yeah, is absolutely. a way, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons, you know, because it, 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 and it, like I said, I, I must clarify: this is this problem is not native to service design per se. Sure. Even sure. In, in in healthcare, you know, an MRI may reveal cer certain things that might be different uh, from what a patient interview can reveal, and that could be different from a blood test. So that's another a, a, a metaphor for what we mean by a perspective, right? The more perspectives you can bring. Um, the the better we are able to uh, you know solve the puzzle and 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 focus on the strategic design. And what have you seen is the um, uh, the biggest challenge of creating like this strategic narrative? I can imagine that there are challenges in itself in actually getting this, making this. Mm -hmm. I think uh, um, uh, so. Uh, the the biggest challenge is getting past the general discussion of uh, or general notion of the word strategic and narrative mm. and uh -huh. applying it to and how does this apply to the design of a service right that's the first challenge because in a the world of strategy or teaching strategy or uh, or the very idea of you know um, strategic advisory this is not new one of, it's one of the oldest professions right so strategy is not new design is not new the challenge is how do you how how do we how, how can we be more imaginative of what we mean by the strategic design for services because uh, services are this thing that we we all are able to describe but uh, we all struggle in in defining in terms of what are the parts right if this were a strategy and it translates into the design of a service what do I see so that has been a challenge and that's where my work and my focus has been almost like narrowly in that area. Mm -hmm in creating a language and format where uh, uh, strategic design mm -hmm. can produce some meaningful output. Yeah, so I, again, I'm going to sort of interrupt you for a second because you basically introduced a third topic and that is, like you said, how does this translate into services, right? right. Yeah, 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 <clears throat> it is. Well, continue, it, you are on a roll, so uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so this this goes back to uh, the start of the conversation. You know my own my own journey. What is even a service, right? Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, I had to read a paper from 1966 by uh, James Rathmill in the Journal of Marketing to get my own clarity, right? Because clarity is very important. It's like asking a question, "What is salt?" And you may get different answers around the table. Oh, it's a white substance that that you know, a flavor enhancer. Oh, you know, you can find lots of it in the ocean. So we can have a lot of discussion about salt. But unless, say, if you were to design salt, right, um, then we have to get into the salt as a molecule, right? 
we we have to ar ar arrive at the reality that salt is sodium and chlorine in a sodium mm -hmm. chloride and then mm -hmm. we begin to and then we can go back to the discussion about what kind of salt and you know all these things so i think this is this is what's been missing uh, in 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 um, uh, in, in service, not missing, but it's gotten over for some reason de-emphasized. If you go really go back to one of the seminal papers that a lot of people read in service design, it's the Showstack article, right? Um, designing, uh, gosh, I forget the exact title, but I think everybody knows it. We'll link to it in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. The designing services that deliver, I can't remember, but he, uh, the way where the blueprinting as a concept sort of first emerges. But what's also there in the paper is something called a molecular model. Right, um, and that sort of fell off, and there was this really nice way of analyzing services as a molecule. Well, call it a molecule or call it sure. something else. Yeah. The point she was making was that every service has structure, parts, and how those parts relate to each other. And then she also talks about uh, analysis, variation, the shoe shine example. Right? What if the shoe shine? You know, how do, how do I improve profitability while improving? You know, you know the experience. So there's also that's the dynamics, right? What changes? So I think um, the that's been the the key challenge in services, and uh, uh, the the strategic narrative that I talked to you about. Uh, it's possible because um, it is based on this structural relationship between these parts. It it gave, the, in fact even before this sixteen piece puzzle comes an even more fundamental concept called called the four promises. So every uh, service is a set of four promises. And just understanding how these four promises relate to each other uh, creates a lot of clarity. Uh, and I think, um, so that I, I encourage everyone, uh, and again, service design means so many different things in so many different sectors, in healthcare, um, in digital services. It's, that, that's the, that's the let's, let's, let's think about it. It's no different than the challenge of a biologist, right? You can't talk, we can talk about life in general, but you have to get into uh, a taxonomy very soon and, and, and apply your thinking in particular to it, in the, the s sector uh, that you're applying to. And I think this is the biggest challenge. It's going back to abstract and the concrete. You, you should be able to abstract away and say, what even is a service? Oh, there are a set of four promises. And these four promises lead to these four questions. And these four questions multiplied by the four promises give me the 16 elements. So think like that, right? This is you, designer, as a, as a, as a structural engineer or a scientist. And yet, uh, bring back the detail, right? Begin to see, and you know, users and people interacting, struggling, trying to get a job done, and other organizations or people stepping up and solving. So to be able to go back from the structural analysis to this rich picture that we paint with something like a service blueprint is what will uh, 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 really empower service designers uh, to be invited in more discussions and have a greater impact on, on in many of these matters. Yeah, so <clears throat> the interesting thing about what you're describing is that uh, it becomes, in the most positive uh, way, more a science than, in, well, it complements the art uh, uh, aspect of service design, which is a lot in there right now. A, a lot of service design feels like art. Well, there is a much bigger science part to services, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, and let's let's be careful with when we create perhaps this false uh, uh, dichotomy between art and science. I've had my own little education. Uh, so yes, I, I do come from an from an engineering background, but I have uh, I think what both of us mean is that let's learn what we can from science, but also science itself learns from art. Take for example data visualization and how we express data through through meaningful visualizations. That is really learning from art. And uh, if we able to, uh, uh, so if, with that clarification, in fact, art creates new thinking, right? Art, art informs design, design informs engineering, engineering informs economics. There's, there's, there's a whole discussion about that. So I think, uh, I think uh, uh, v v uh, the, the, the area of service design is attracting um, uh, people from various backgrounds, from graphic design to, in, in my class last week, we had two people with a law degree, one with philosophy, a couple of them for illustrators, and we we're all talking services. And I told them right from the beginning of the class, reach into your depth, what you studied in college, rely on those fundamentals. 
and then bring them to the designs of services. So I think that's uh, that will continue to happen. And I think uh, uh, once we have this common language, then then each uh, all our backgrounds, our trainings, the way we thought ten years ago, will suddenly at some point on some challenge come to bear. And I think that's that's the fun part of it. And, and I think yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And I think it was a few episodes back where, if I'm not mistaken, Joe Bailey said, if we want to get better at designing services, we really have to understand what a service is. Like we have to, and it seems that um, there hasn't been that much, much attention for that or appetite, but uh, it seems that that's also what you're sort of advocating. Like let's deeply understand the the structure of a service and then we know what the boundaries are and if we know what the boundaries are we can it it becomes more fun and probably more productive and effective to design within those boundaries no absolutely and the, and the fun part should not be underemphasized i always tell people whether i'm teaching them or even my colleagues when we're working on a problem i i i, I say be curious be imaginative right think in shapes think in figures think in numbers uh, and and be you know childlike about it, but I think uh, Joel is absolutely right. Um, uh, you know he he uh, he's a he's a great guy. I, I still remember uh, uh, his talk from several years ago, where he stood up and said, "Go deep or go home." <laughs> I keep teasing him about it because that's such such a, a good topic. And I think uh, go deep is another way of saying see the underlying structure right beyond the superficial layers. And I think that's part of his message. But also, um, you're indeed right. Um, they're, they're, they're fantastic, excellent books on the design process in general on, on, on when it comes to service design. Uh, the focus that I have and some of us are focusing on is making it, uh, explaining a little bit more on the services, service part of service design. What sure. is service? Yeah. What are the patterns? Uh, and how can I? So that's, that's where my work is. That's where my book also uh, thinking in services focus almost entirely. There's very little in it about the actual design process. More, more of it focuses on what does the design of a service look like to the mind of a strategist. Mm -hmm. So, so I think uh, that is that is essentially why I teach, and 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 I think uh, people are appreciating that. Uh, many, many, many of the uh, people who who I'm teaching through the strategic design class are highly experienced service designers. Some of them have been doing service design for like 20 years. Uh, and, and, they're, 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 um, and, and it's testimony to the humility as well, right? They're, they're still curious and saying, hey, I want, to, I want to focus a little bit more on what is this thing called, we call services and how, do, how, right. how, am I, how might I see across landscape? You don't know who you're going to help next, right? Um, a local city government trying to set up uh, uh, shelters or the broader challenge of how do I distribute loans and payments or uh, or so I think um, uh, that's really the dexterity uh, is very very helpful and which is why one has to understand services at a level uh, that uh, especially if you're a design professional you're 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 the trusted advisor then it's your job it, it's 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 an effort you have to make to understand services a much more fundamental level even though if you, you may not think and talk about it in your language you still use the tools and devices that you use day to day mm -hmm. right those are very useful um, but but uh, 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 you know going back uh, and, and constantly training yourself at a more fundamental level gives you the depth uh, or as uh, one of my friends Alok Nandi calls a dynamic shelf right mm -hmm. from which you as a designer almost like a magician reach into that depth because of your understanding and i think this which is why it's important to understand services um to to be able to have more impact uh, on the field of service design it's it's an exciting time to be in service design right now because there's uh, this knowledge has probably been available for quite some time but it's now becoming obvious why we need to have like a more fundamental understanding of the thing that we're actually trying to design or design for. And uh, it sort of opens up, like, I'm, I'm curious, I'm interested, I want to dig into this. And uh, it's, it's good to know that there's a lot you can learn, people you can rely upon. Um, so yeah, for me, it's exciting, still an, an exciting times in service design. Uh, I think so, I think so. And, 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 and yeah, your, your call for action is good. Like, get deep into what services are, that will help 
you as a professional and that will help the people you're trying to help. I think so, yeah. yeah. Anjit, uh, we're heading towards the end of the interview, but we have sort of two really important things uh, we need to do. First one is, I want to know from you if you've got a question for us, the listeners, viewers of the show, is there anything that you'd like to us to think about next to the things we've already discussed? To, to think about in general? Yes, yes. Is it? A okay. question, a question that's on your mind. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, how might we learn, um, you know, uh, from other disciplines that have, for whatever reason, have had 10, 20 or 30 years ahead of us? So, for example, we borrow a lot of techniques uh, from manufacturing. Take something like Kanban, right? This was a technique that was very old and now we are, it, it, it's made, gotten a new life mm -hmm. in, in new domains and disciplines. So, uh, and one of these, uh, uh, um, and, and many years ago, um, or 50, 60 years ago, biology went from uh, being the science it always was into informatics when we started to imagine biology as, as in a genetic code. So now we're coding and now, now think we have something amazing as CRISPR, right? Where you can literally look at the code and sequence it and edit it. And, and in fact, uh, uh, so, so there are examples like these that every discipline makes this big leap, right? Uh, it happened even in software development from procedural languages as Xerox Spark, we imagine objects and small talk. So my biggest question is how might we in the world of service design make such a fundamental leap what could it be in the form of? Could it be, for example, uh, a pattern library? A lot of a lot of people refer to Christopher Alexander's pattern language, but that was in architecture and urban planning. It has usefulness, but we need native knowledge of our own. So how might we make an advance like that? That would be the biggest question cool. that cool. we could think as collectively as this in service design. Cool. I like that question. Really curious what people have to say in the comments. Um, now, the final thing, we said at the beginning that we're going to do a book giveaway. How, we're going to do a contest. So uh, it's up to you to think what a good question would be where people have to comment on. Huh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never done an interview where I haven't been stumped by the question itself. <laughs> um, so a contest for... Um, Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Um, whoever. <laughs> well, listen. Uh, Go ahead. Well, I just so realized that I was about to formulate the question, but it's quickly become a cast many too. I was going to think in terms of I had a lot of fun writing the book, uh, and in there are several movie references, <laughs> and I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, okay, maybe that's what it is. Contact someone who has who who's already has the book or reading the book. And find three movie references, and the book is yours. There All you right. go. And if there are multiple winners, we'll we'll pick a random one. And if there are multiple people who have the right answer, we'll pick a random one. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. You know what to do. People go to the comment section and uh, leave a comment. If people want to get in touch with you to continue this conversation, what's the best way? I, uh, so uh, there's the design coders Slack. It's simply designcoders.slack.com. Uh, but the easiest way to get in touch with me is via LinkedIn. I'm easy to find and uh, I'm, I'm making new connections, meeting new people. And also my Twitter handle is M-X-I-Q-B-A-L. That's my Twitter handle. And we'll be somewhere here on the screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Manjeet, um, I think we're sort of at the end. Um, stay safe. Stay healthy also for everybody who, who's listening or watching. Please stay home, be, uh, be healthy. And thanks for sharing your thoughts and ideas, what's on your mind. I think we're entering sort of a really interesting era of service design. So thanks for sharing that, Majid. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. So what do you think will the big leap be in service design? I'm really curious to hear your comments. Leave them down below. And what you also can do down below is to leave your answers to uh, Majid's question regarding the book giveaway contest. So do that down below and we'll draw a random winner who got the answers right. If you enjoyed this episode, I hope you did. 
make sure you grab the link and share it with just one other person today who might find it interesting as well. That way you'll help to grow the Service Design Show community and help me to invite more guests like Majid here on the show for you. Thanks for watching. And if you want to continue getting inspired by other service designers, click this video over here because we're going to continue over there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over here.